Hi, we're the Swensons, the family behind Let's Adventure Some More. And this year we decided to ditch our San Francisco Bay Area lifestyle for a trip around the world. It's week nine for us and we have fled the volcano on Bali and we are now in Cairns, Australia. Hi, Hi from Cairns! Before we left Bali, we were able to take a trip to the north part of the island and see some of our favorite animals ever. Yes, we woke up at a very early 3 a.m. and got picked up by a driver and driven off to the north side and we got to experience um, boat chasing with dolphins. Oh, dolphin chasing in a boat. Yes. And now, anytime we have to wake up early, we're on dolphin time. Another part of our travels on Bali took us to the Git Git Waterfall. Yes, it was a huge, ginormous waterfall. I don't even know how tall it was. No, I, I'm going to go at least 50 meters. It was thereabouts. huge. And uh, we just walked down into it and there was some water that we played in. And then William took the kids over to really right beneath the waterfall to... We didn't go under it, we just went next to it and got kind of blown away by all uh, the rushing water. And completely water. drenched from yeah. head to toe. And I forgot my swimsuit, so I had to take kilt in. In China, we got to see the back of the 21 in Xinping, China, and here in Bali, we got to see the back of the 50,000 rupiah in Ulun Danu Batan Temple. And we didn't even realize where we were no. until we saw everyone holding up their rupiah to take pictures. And of course, our rupiah was a, diff was a different it. rupiah, so we had to exchange with somebody else. So thankfully, some other tourists <laughs> who I'm sure were Balinese or Indonesian, uh, were very thoughtful to trade with us after they had finished taking their pictures so that we could get ours. Yeah. In the area near the temple, it was very touristy. And up towards the exit, they had a whole bunch of bats and owls. It was almost like a, an animal exhibit where you could pay to hold the animals, but we just looked at them instead. Well, I misread the sign and I took a picture and the guy yelled at me. Yes. So I And I them. yelled at you. Well, it said it was to hold them, but I wasn't holding or them. Or a selfie, but it was I, a picture. Like I said, I misread the sign. <laughs>
Bali. Um, the epic journey. The epic journey. And we had been aware of the volcano eruptions over the weekend on Saturday and on Sunday. And so we just really kept watch of the conditions, the things that we were hearing, both on the Balinese side and uh, English channels, English speaking channels. And there was definitely some sensationalism on the part of foreign uh, coverage. Really, when you walked outside of your door in Bali, everything was very calm. It was and business as usual. Yeah. And I even talked to several locals and several expat locals who were like, meh, we might get some ash, meh. It wasn't a big deal. It, it did not disrupt the daily lives of people who were not in the direct exclusion zone. Also, tourism is their bread and butter and puts food on the table. So they do encourage people to come regardless of situations or possibilities of endangerment. Um, throughout this entire process, we continue to see people just not really show much concern for the volcano or where it was at, not really discussing it, um, almost like deflecting from it. So there was certainly that aspect as we were going into our decision-making process. We had already seen some airport closures and decided, well, I, I was a little less concerned. Jessica was uh, more, more concerned about the possibility um, and looking into options to try to find out what other ways we can get off the island. There was definitely some more agitation in the air, imagining that it was ash. Uh, we decided to start wearing air masks, or masks covering our face and noses for breathing. And then while we were still in our house, we experienced a power outage that was about an hour long. And that just really, as a mom and watching over three littles and as a family, that just put me over the edge. Maybe if I was single or if we were young and in our 20s, things would have turned out differently. Um, but after that, I was pretty much ready to start looking at other options. So our travel agency had given us a variety of options, knowing that the airport was still closed and actually continued to be closed for a good three days leading up to our original flight. Instead, we decided to head over to Jawa, which is the island next door, and we took a four-hour drive to the ferry, ferried over to Jawa, stayed the night, and then took another eight and a half car drive to, what was that place called again? Sub. Subiaya? No. Sub. Surab. Surabaya, which is where their international airport, one of on East Java, um, is, and then we spent the night there and woke up at dolphin time, dolphin time. <laughs> to take a flight at 5 a.m. and the airport there, people, Slam. yes, it was so so busy with with other people. Yeah, much people like were us. sleeping, and trying to leave because there was a backlog of three days worth of travelers leaving Bali. But it was hard. By the end, Vesper was complaining that her bottom was sore because she had been sitting essentially for three days between a car, planes, ferry. Um, we definitely pulled out bribery in time. Uh, it was really Hopeless just... <laughs> it was just a grin and bear it. And then after we finally got back to, to Keynes, we learned that our original flight ended up being canceled anyway. So it would have backlogged us as far as our itinerary goes. And we definitely have responsibilities here, or commitments that we've made in Australia. And we really wanted to visit Northern Australia and Queensland. But there were times where we were going back and forth and saying like, is this the wisest choice? Are we overreacting? Um, it is a volcano. It could not ex it continue to erupt. There may be no lava. There may be no more ash. And so we really just had to make a decision based on our comfortability and our, the needs of our family and the itinerary. But it did drop us off. Instead of straight into Cairns, we had to go through Kuala Lumpur and Malaysia, and then we had to fly down into uh, Melbourne, and that was completely on the southern side of the island, uh, uh, the continent. And so uh, Jessica reached out on social media and uh, said, hey, folks, friends, family, do you happen to know anyone in Australia? Because we're going to be stuck in Melbourne for a night. Um, and within a couple hours, um, a whole bunch of people had responded. 
and uh, poured out lots of love and lots of ideas and a lot of uh, tagging of other people on Facebook. And uh, we got to meet a very sweet family who took us in for the night and uh, even picked us up from the airport and then dropped us off at the local uh, train station the next day so we could take public transport. It was really um, a godsend. It was amazing. It, I was almost in tears by the end just knowing that they had provided so much for us and they didn't know us. And it was just a powerful example of how far kindness goes in helping others, regardless of whether you know them or not. week we feel like we're very thankful that we have options um, and that again it was just upsetting our itinerary that we were able to get out safe we are thankful that the volcano has now since quieted some and I think since we are on a year-long journey we can take a week disruption in stride we know that there are some people who didn't get to participate in their vacation in their holiday or some who totally just spent you know, the last part of their holiday trying to get home to regular life. So I feel like that would have been a harder situation for us had those two things been applicable to us. And one of the things that I am actually really uh, proud of is that even though we still have our daily issues with kids and temperament and getting along and fighting and attitude and all of the above, when we told the kids that we were going to have to pack up and leave early and there would be multiple days of travel, they actually took it in stride. They did really well. They had minor issues here and there, but that's just daily life. But the fact that, that we were going to have to spend long hours doing long travel, unexpected, unplanned, and um, largely unprepared for it, they, they took it really, really well. And they... they didn't do a lot of arguing, didn't, didn't do a lot of whining in advance. And the other thing was I had, we had been alerted that the volcano was active the previous month and so I had called just to get a little lay of the land about options for us prior to going to Bali if it was just an option not to go to Bali and because things were pretty stable at the time of us arriving. There was no options not to go without it coming out of our own pocket. And so we ended up going and hindsight, I'm glad that we at least got a decent week in Bali. It's a beautiful place. It's magical. We totally recommend going. We would love to go back again. Um, there's things that we wanted to visit and see that we missed. Um, so it's definitely something that we are glad that we did, even though <laughs> It was a bear uh, this last week just having to get out and into Australia. So the morning that we spent with the Melbourne family, the Johnston family, uh, they introduced us to one of the typical Australian cultural items. It's, it's uh, Australian, I believe it's also English. It's, uh, it yeah, it's, uh, it's a cultural icon that anyone from here would recognize. It's the classic Vegemite. And they were so thoughtful to share the proper way to enjoy this delicacy. Sparingly and um, on toast. Yes, so we got to experience that. Upon finally arriving in Cairns, 
Um, uh, for you out in America, it's Cairns. Uh, but for everyone out here, it's Cairns. No, can, can, Cairns. Canes. Basically, Cairns. Um, kind of like when they say cheers, it's cheers. Now it's Cairns. Uh, when we finally arrived in Cairns, we, uh, we got this really cool place for the night. Uh, but probably the most epic part of it was looking up and getting buzzed by bats that were easily two feet wide, uh, maybe a foot and a half, but monstrous bats. I believe they're fruit bats, so we weren't really scared. At least that's what I told the kids. So when they bats buzzed over their heads, they didn't freak out too much. Call it the lagoon. They actually pump in water from the sea. They filter it out, and it's a salt water pool that's um, a couple hundred meters square. Um, it goes shallow for the kids and a little bit deeper with some fun water features inside. And sand on the side. The sand beach. on one side. It's actually really cool. I would love to have one back home. Yeah, and it's free to the public. So we spent a good portion of the afternoon there just letting the kids be free and get sand in their butts. And